This series of lunchtime conversations intends to capture insights from some of society's thought leaders in these times. It's the 19th of May, and here in the UK, there is still a lot of uncertainty, but a real sense of beginning to end the lockdown and beginning to plan for recovery. Part of my role at Warwick University is to make sure the education programmes remain relevant and continue to serve the needs of society. To do this, it's important to be part of the professional, the research and the industry community. The people I speak to um, as part of this series, they form my professional network and re I rely on them to help inform and steer our educational programmes. We've seen seismic shifts in all areas of life and the extraordinarily pervasive nature of COVID-19 will have lasting effects. With me today to discuss, I have Yeshim Ku. She's a futurist and a play expert. Welcome to lunch, Yeshim. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm very much excited to be here with you today. <laughs> well, we met um, maybe about 10 years ago when I attended a talk you were giving in Cyprus about play and creativity to students of architecture. I was struck then that your interest runs so deep. You hold a you hold a real a really profound understanding of the importance and the meaning of play. Can you what what do you think play and playfulness? Why do you think it is so important? Um, with the play, it's actually it's a it's such an innate um, kind of behavior that all the living all the beings they they are in playful mode. Because with the play, you start to learn how to actually, uh, you start to first understand about yourself and now you start to understand others and the environment that you are in. Um, that's a very interactive and a very much uh, connected style of learning about your surrounding and your, your reason to be in this world. So I think that's the reason the play and playfulness are fundamental principles of how we can actually find our way. It's a way of finding your uh, own reason to be here. I think that's that's what I can say. Mm. Well, I, I mean, I, I introduced it. it was, I was so struck with the effect it had on the people you worked with. I introduced the day of play to develop leadership skills and um, so people could learn ways of leading and making meaning to bring attention to the importance of divergent and creative thinking. Through our master's programmes, I met some, I mean, I mean, I constantly meet some like the brightest engineers and they either work or they'll go on to work for some of leading organisations. Um, but when they're doing a master's, becoming more technically brilliant isn't everything they need to be learning. Um, becoming really excellent technical problem solvers, they are that already. And what, what we wanted to help deliver or we wanted the, to give them exposure to was to find ways to not just solve complex problems, but to shape a vision for the future and determine what their problems might be. And we needed to find a we needed to find a different way, a different way of working in, in the classroom with master students. And now you and th I mean, this, this proved to be extremely successful. It's impactful whenever we run it. You know, the students are always impacted and they notice how their mindsets have shifted and how they are more confident to be creative and to take that kind of that mental vision leap. You've brought your knowledge about play to many different audiences. And um, what are some of the more memorable audiences you've brought it to? I think uh, for me, it's, I mean, some, some people are naturally playful. So when you bring the play into that environment, it becomes like a naturally play. And you don't really see the shift that quickly. But when you bring that playfulness into an environment, where you would imagine it will be harder to you know, use it and make the implications. Um, for example, um, I went to last year, I went to Saudi Arabia and it was amazing. It was amazing to see how um, uh, how the people, the audience were so playful, very quickly adapted to and bring in, you know, using so many different colorful pieces. As you know, we create these kind of worlds and imagination and talk through over the objects. And it was so easy. It, the flow was so um, almost seamless. What was, the, what was the nature of that conference? Was that why, why were you there? Who were you speaking to? Um, the conference actually was uh, uh, for three weeks. They conduct this playfulness and play, 
and um, and they wanted to bring in the creativity and the connection with the creativity and playfulness and how it is actually mm. uh, uh, it's not just for children it's actually for adults how they can be playful beings and uh, and it was really amazing people like um, from scientists from um, you know, artists and all these kind of different combination of intellectuals, how they use the playfulness in their mm. own domain. Because yeah. what you do is you start to see so many different patterns and you start to play with them. And that's how you start to be creative and see a different possibilities within that domain. And that's what we call creativity anyway. Mm. And like, and I guess in the world we live in, um, having this interdisciplinarity and having the ability to um, address real world problems and situations with lots of different disciplines, finding methods and techniques to bring communities together to do that, um, particularly with such a creative, a creative outcome so many times, I guess it's just becoming more and more important. Um, in the past, you had a job, uh, you have a, had a job as a futurist. What does that entail? It was it it's it's actually it's a it's a magical job <laughs> because what you do is you try to it's I think it's almost definition for me it's a definition of being playful because you really look at the factual things the information the raw material and now you try to look at the patterns of the history what happened how the behavior of people changed over time and you project that to the future for five to ten years ahead and how these people are going to continue to behave. And if there's any kind of changes happens, especially with technology, for example, it's easier to predict. So it is, I guess, you're saying that technology and behaviours, do they both go together or how do you how do you see them connected? And how do you, because I'm guessing you're not saying what the exact product is, you're talking more about trends or the way that we will behave with technology or with each other? Yes, usually we look at the steep trends. So it's the social, technological, environmental, economical and political. So there are, I mean, technology is just one piece of it, but it's a it's a very impactful one, especially mm -hmm. I'm talking about between 2005 and 2012, where the platforms were just new and they were just coming into the market. And because of the, it was so new, um, it changed the behavior of ourselves and how we are interacting and socializing and also how we become playful beings. Um, mm. And it was really fun. As a futurist, that's what you look at, uh, slight changes in the world. Yeah, yeah. yes, and I imagine, uh, well, I well, maybe, uh, maybe I'll ask you later about maybe how you see the trends might come from the behaviors and the way that we're interacting with technology differently now, the implications they may or may not have going forward. I do have a question from um, one of our students, Yishin Yan, and she would like to know, how do you become a play expert? So where did you study and, and what did you study and, and how did you become an expert in play? Um, that's a great question. I guess I evolved to become a play expert. I studied, of course, um, toy design. So my, um, my foundation is coming from uh, toys and children and understanding the nature of play from the um, children's perspective but over the years i was super interested in how brain develops and why it's actually what are the impacts of outside impacts and how it actually can be um almost leveraged in a different way and um and then i also start to use play in kind of environments which is kind of unlikely playful mm. and uh, so and also um and people start to ask me coming to, you know, play and beauty and play and mental health and play. So those questions also made me to think much more deeper. And then I start to see uh, and I start to give so many speeches and workshops in different places. So it's kind of like um, I seriously almost evolved by doing so many different varieties of playfulness and mm -hmm. playful jobs and it kind of made me an expert in this area. So, I mean, from having all these different applications of play in different areas and with different people, do you think, do you see there's a big difference between adults and children when they're playing? Or, or do you think the essence is the same? How do you view that? That's a really great way of saying it. essence is the same, I think. It's, of course, the reason for doing 
um, playfulness is it might have different kind of outcomes. So, for example, when children are playing, they are they are learning. I think the learning is the play for them um, mm. because they are just seeing everything for the first time and it becomes and they do it many times and they are, you know, they try to uh, learn it and master it. And yes. with adults, they are trying to break the norms and they try to go back to uh, their own, almost that curiosity, the exploration phase and almost like a un unlearning. And I think unlearning is a very important thing because you try to forget what you have known so far so you can have that kind of enthusiasm. That's what the children have. And, and so I think they are kind of coming from different uh, directions. Mm -hmm. Essence is, of course, the same, the curiosity and excitement. Yes. Uh, and it's a continuity, I think. It's mm. a continuity of different learning phases. I think, I mean, I, I can, I guess I can, um, I, when you talk about that, that's very much resonates with me as what we see with our master's students and particularly those that have got years of experience that really we're in a place where we're uh, allowing that mental agility to keep going back in and uh, uh, addressing and challenging assumptions that we make and um, that we think maybe just you just set but, but actually you can challenge so many assumptions and give give yourself a real mindset shift mindset shift but you almost have to practice i think you almost have to almost have a daily practice with being I, playful or i totally agree as you know in our own workshops you know, we see it how it's even within a day, within hours, how even the mind shifts. You know, when we start with our own circles, like doodling, yeah. and with the coffee stains, making up stories, you know, from divergent thinking to convergence. And um, it's, seriously, I love that kind of uh, metamorphosis, like how people transform and they start to really look from uh, different perspectives and understand and even uh, creating empathy is the most important thing because then you start to really come up with new ideas. Once you start to feel it in you, then yeah. you can really make proper solutions, I think. Mm, yeah, yes, yes, and I guess, I mean, maybe in the masters and, and professional practice, you know, we, we promote very much the reflective practice. So there may be a distinction between the playfulness and then the reflection and I, and, and we, I guess we, we kind of ensure that our students, we direct our students to do reflection. Um, but I guess maybe as you become a practitioner, a, a creative, a playful practitioner, you will almost carry out that reflection uh, in harmony with, with your playful practice. Would you, would you say that? Or do you think it's something that adults need to have as a separate activity? Uh, no, I think, I think you do have this in and out. It's kind of like a wave. I, I think play has this wave kind of, reflection and then you dip down and you forget about that uh, you know the content and what you are doing because you have to almost lose yourself right and mm -hmm. we do see when people are playing even for five minutes you know you see their faces they are in there they are playing and they are deep learning and um and the reflection part comes up you know when they need to take the oxygen <laughs> you know mm -hmm. so they are kind of diving into their own world and then they come back and they reflect, they learn, and then they can go much more deeper. So I think that's what is beautiful about the whole yes. beautiful experiences and even facilitating it. Mm. Yeah, then certainly, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm often struck at how serious play actually is. I'm often struck at how important it is to the individuals when they're involved in it and, and how, um, and and how seriously they take it and that uh, they think deeply about their actions although they're maybe making a fantasy world or making things from play-doh um, and yeah. they are thinking deeply about what they're doing in the moment of actually playing which strikes me it really strikes me that if you could get that kind of attention and losing yourself in your professional practice in your work yeah. it's a really powerful place to be it, it is amazing because i think your true knowledge and insights really comes up I mean, you start to, I think you start to also sense so much more about your subject that you can actually make much better connections. Mm. Yes, okay, well, thank you. Now, um, I guess we're, we're, you know, we're living in a pandemic, as you know, and there will be some lasting societal changes from this pandemic. 
you know, many of the people we've talked to already over this series, you know, the differences in work, the, the attitudes, the um, the importance on local, the importance on community, on connections. Um, do you think, um, of, of course, you know, we are almost living in a, uh, we're living in fear at the moment, you know, there's a big amount of fear in society at the moment. Do you think that's lasting? What implications does that have for having a, a playful outlook? Is there a place for play going forward? And and is there a place, will it be challenging? Or do you think we've got a renewed appetite for it? How, how do you see it affecting? I think we are, everybody has their own coping mechanism. So it's, I think it's going to be um, really, I like at this point, for example, 40% of the uh, board games uh, sold out. It's kind of like it's quite amazing the mm -hmm. you know the rise of you know certain games and certain toys being selling. So this is also showing us people are in serious need of um, forgetting about the reality. You know, it's kind of like an escapism in some ways. But it's also to you, and we need that. We need to uh, kind of entertain and make our brains happier so because when you play and when you forget about the time your dopamine and serotonin all of these you know happy uh, hormones actually is yes. kind of out there so it helps us to cope and even for our immune system is really important so it makes us so much more stronger and it it actually protects us from um having a hard time much harder time uh, yes mechanism um and is this going to stay with us? I think some of the things, for example, people really discovered about their own creativity, you know, mm -hmm. especially being in the kitchen, you see a lot of people baking um, yeah. and some people are making more art and some people yeah. are going into their gardens, you know, and they are sharing it. That's the beauty about social media, I think. And that's, that becomes like a, uh, there's a happy kind of happy, uh, happy sharing. <laughs> You know, almost everybody's happiness sharing and there's a playfulness in that because people are also saying this is what I did. So that's kind of mm -hmm. like um, almost a, a way of, um, you know, we are all creating a community of creatives. So it's very similar in the, in the it's actually uh, proven in the hardest times, the creativity rises. It's mm -hmm. like a renaissance time, for example. Um, you see a lot of wars, a lot of horrible illnesses and everything is going crazy. But at the same time, the creativity and and also um, serious innovations and everything happens during that time. So I think it's kind of like um, it's a coping mechanism that yes. place brings in. Um, and I think creativity will stay with us. I think we are going to find out more and also mindfulness. You know, those two trends are huge. Yeah, and that's probably going to continue afterwards. It was already coming in anyway, so it's not something new, new, but yeah. just accelerated the power of it. Mm. Yeah. Yes, thank you. So um, I guess for you, Yeshim, you know, going forward, uh, how are you? I just want to know, you are a play expert. You know, are you playing just now? What are you up to? You know, what's passing your time as you wait for the world to open back up? I am I am playing with my allotment, so I do have my garden. Oh, lovely! <laughs> I, am, I am playing with my um, seeds and germinating them, and also I am trying to write a book, uh, which is also <laughs> very much uh, tickling my mind. That's what I would say. <laughs> yes. Yeah, mm. and also I'm drawing a lot, uh, a lot more than before, definitely. Mm. Uh, well, thank you very much for sharing these insights. For me, you know they're enormously useful to help steer the education programmes. And um, for the students that are listening, it's a really nice insight for them. And they may choose to use some of these quotes as their secondary data for their for their research projects. And for the wider Warwick community, just very interesting and insightful. So thank you very much for sharing it. If anybody listening to this or overhearing this would like to hear more from Yeshim, please drop me a line and I'll forward on. Or I'm on Warwick's website and if you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to see a link on the closing slide. And this series will be made available as a podcast. So just search Insights Over Lunch or on your preferred podcast platform.
Thank you very much. And Yeshim, um, enjoy your lunch. Thank you very much. You too. <laughs>